In this video, I'm going to discuss searching with subject headings or controlled vocabulary. If you're able to understand how the subject headings or controlled vocabulary is organized and are able to utilize it, what you'll find is you will eliminate some of the issues you have when you do a keyword search. Mainly that what you'll find is that the articles that you get in doing a search or that you retrieve are more applicable or more focused on what it is that you're looking for and may more effectively answer your question or fulfill your information need. Now the two main databases you'll be using as you do searching are PubMed and CINAHL and each of them has their own controlled vocabulary. PubMed's is known as MeSH and CINAHL's is known as CINAHL headings. In each case, they're organized exactly the same. So as I go to talk about this stuff, everything I'm talking about is related in each one and will be applicable. The only difference between the two is that some words that are used in one set or word list is not the same as the one used in the other. That is mainly because of the audiences they speak to. CINAHL is the cumulative index of nursing and allied health literature and therefore speaks to nurses and allied health professionals and they use one set of terms. Whereas PubMed is more broad in nature in talking to the entire medical community and therefore may have some other terms that they use that don't appear in the CINAHL headings. Now in understanding that, one of the nice things about using subject headings is the fact that you get away from some of the issues you have when doing a keyword search. And that is, when every, no matter how you want to describe a topic, like say soda pop as you can see over here on the right, the controlled vocabulary is going to force everyone to use the same word. Because the controlled vocabulary is an established set of words that are used to categorize or to tell you what an article is about. So when it comes to soda pop, there may be six different ways to say soda pop, which you see over here on the right. And depending on where you're from and what your experiences are, you may be familiar with all or just a very few of these terms. Now if you were doing a thorough keyword search, you would have to use all of these terms in order to ensure that you got everything that was on that topic. Whereas when you use a controlled vocabulary, what happens is when someone reads this article and is trying to tell you what it's about, they will see any of these six terms and look at them and say, okay, if these terms are being used and they're discussing this, what we're going to do is we're going to categorize them all under soda pop. So if you know that soda pop is the preferred subject heading for any of these six terms, you are insured of getting any article that talks about soda pop regardless if you knew all six of these terms or not. So it's one way to kind of get a, be a catch-all and that prevents you from having to know every possible term that may have to been used in order to do a thorough search. One other thing to keep in mind when it comes to uh, controlled vocabulary subject headings is they are sometimes subdivided into major and minor headings. Anytime you see one as being um, coded as a major heading, what it's going to do is it's going to really focus your search or decrease the number. The reason is because when you designate something a major heading, that means it's the major topic or discussion of the paper. And that can be helpful in, in helping to weed out some articles that may not be useful to you. When looking at the subject heading field of a article, you'll know that, that which ones are the major topics because in PubMed they'll have stars beside them. And in CINAHL, they'll divide them into major and minor headings. One other thing to keep in mind when it comes to subject headings is remember I told you different databases speak to different audiences or have intentions of speaking to different audiences. And so occasionally they may define a term differently than you're familiar with. Therefore, what happens with all subject headings is they all have what is called a scope note. What that scope note will do for you is it will help you to determine if the term is in fact the term you want to use because it will define it for you. Another thing to keep in mind when it comes to subject headings is they also are in a hierarchical tree structure going from broad to specific. 
You can see that in the examples here. This one being from PubMed on the left and this one being from CINAHL on the right. You'll notice that each of these are discussing nurses and that there's a hierarchical um, structure to them. You'll see nurse here, meaning it's broad in nature, and then more specific type of nurses here. Just the same thing in CINAHL. You'll see nurses at the top, and then as you go down the tree, you'll notice that there's different or more specific types of nurses addressed. As the terms go from broad at the top to more specific, what you also need to keep in mind is you'll go from several articles at the top where it addresses nurses to very few articles as you get more particular. Depending upon what you're searching for and your need, that may or may not be useful to know. One other thing to keep in mind as you look at this, uh, these examples of the hierarchies is PubMed, I told you, speaks more to a broad medical community. So what you'll notice here is that its tree structure, or how it, it identifies nurses, is very different than the one for CINAHL. In this one, you have nurses as a broad term, and then just a couple specific type of nurses. Whereas when you go to CINAHL, which is specifically intended to be used by nurses, what you'll find is you have nurses broad, and then you have all these different more specific types of nurses, but they get really specific about the types of nurses they're going to address when it comes to the literature. Another thing to keep in mind when you're searching in the hierarchy when it comes to controlled vocabulary is that many people look at a tree and the first thing they want to do so to speak is run to the bottom of the tree because as you know the top of the tree just like this tree here is broad and it, it will give you a lot of articles and as you go down the tree you're going to narrow your focus and get fewer well many times people will believe or they're in a rush that they need to be as narrow as possible as soon as possible I will tell you that that's really a big mistake you sometimes will want to uh, start your search a little broad in order to ensure that you're getting every article that might be useful to you instead of taking every one of your terms and making them as specific as possible to run you to the bottom of the tree because what you might find when you do that is that you end up with very few articles because you've really narrowed your focus and as a result you may only end up with three or four articles which may not be adequate either to a complete an assignment or to adequately or um, answer the question in an informed manner. So what you might need to do is you might need to take and back up to move forward. In other words, what I mean by that is you may need to back up the tree just a little bit in order to broaden your search a little bit and look at more articles in order to ensure that you have every article possible to answer the question, whether that be for an assignment or in reference to patient care. An example of what I mean may be one like this issue right here that I had with a uh, PhD student a uh, short time ago in which she was looking at doing her doctoral dissertation on breastfeeding practices of adolescent mothers in Vietnam. Now as you can tell by the, the issue or the question, what she's looking at is breastfeeding, which is a specific type of feeding. Um, adolescent mothers which is a particular type of mother so automatically we're really narrowing the focus and then she's looking at Vietnam and Vietnam is a particular country so now we have three narrow terms that we're looking at combining in order to find articles now when she did this what she found and when she came to me is that she had done a search in which she only found 10 articles initially now you cannot write a doctoral dissertation on 10 articles. And so then when I looked at it with her, what I decided to do was think about it in a way of how can I broaden this search and it still address the topic? Well, I really didn't want to get off of breastfeeding practices because breastfeeding is a particular type of feeding for babies that mothers do that's important. But then again, I didn't want to get away from adolescent mothers because adolescent mothers are a particular set of mothers and so the issues they face may be very unique in comparison to other mothers. So I focused on Vietnam. And when it came to Vietnam, what you'll notice is that Vietnam belongs to a um, 
subject heading tree that is of geographic locations, which you can see here, and on the Asian continent. Well, when we initially started, and I was talking to her about this, she said, well, why don't we just back up to Asia? And I told her, I said, that's not a really good idea. Because what you're doing there is you are broadening the search. So we are going to go from 10 articles to several more. But the problem is, as you can see, there are lots of different countries when it comes to Asia. And especially when it comes to Western Asia, what you might find is that some of those countries aren't always um, in line with the same life experiences that are experienced in Vietnam or say Central Asia where you see places like Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Those countries where they have breastfeeding mothers who are adolescents, their experience is going to be very different than what you might see in Vietnam. So what I suggested that she do is broaden her search a little bit but don't go all the way to the top of the tree. Where we stopped was with Southeast Asia. And what we did when it came to Southeastern Asia is we really took it and then we exploded the term. So therefore, when you explode, the database looks for Southeastern Asia as well as every one of these specific countries underneath. Because while all these countries, people, and uh, uh, climates are a little different, their geography is different, there's enough commonalities between the people and the experiences of adolescent mothers and their breastfeeding practices that what's going on in one of these countries is going to translate at least a little bit if not all the way to say Vietnam. When we did this the set of articles she got directly answered her question and she was very happy and was able to go on to uh, successfully start her dissertation. Now one of the other things about using subject headings that's very useful that you'll notice is that the number of articles you get back many times is a lot less than if you do a keyword search. And the reason is is because you are automatically when you use subject headings focusing your search to a list of controlled vocabulary terms. But not only that, you're also influenced by where the database searches for subject headings. If you recall when it comes to keywords, it's searched all over the citation. When you search for subject headings, what happens is it only searches the subject heading field, which you see in this CINAHL heading in red. Whereas in PubMed, what you'll notice is that it only searches the MeSH heading field. As you can see here, when it comes to the MeSH heading field, the ones that are major have the stars by them. By only searching this particular field, you're automatically decreasing the number of articles you get. And by using the subject headings, you're ensured that the articles you're going to get are going to be directly related to what you're looking for. And that is why, or that is the benefit of using subject headings and how they are organized.